Welcome back to Blender Daily. In today's tutorial I'm going to demonstrate step by step how to create this looping animation with Blender. Let's get started. As always we are going to start this project with a new scene in Blender. And this time we are actually going to use the default cube. So just select it and tap into edit mode with it. Then right click in order to add a few subdivisions and increase the number of cuts to something around 15. We are going to use this additional geometry in order to deform our cube. So to actually do this, let's tap back into object mode and press shift A to bring in a new lattice object. Scale it up so that it covers the whole cube and in the lattice properties increase the resolution to 5 cuts on each axis. Now we can select the cube again and add a lattice modifier to it. For the object we can select our lattice and now we are able to tab into edit mode with our lattice selected and when we move those points around you can see that we can quickly deform our cube. We could manually move all those points however there is a way better and faster method in order to achieve the result we need. For this just press A to select everything, go up to Lattice, Transform and choose Randomize to randomly transform all the selected points. We can increase the strength by playing with this amount value. I'm gonna bring it to something around 0.2 meters. You can also play with the random seed values in order to get different variations. Once you have something that you like, you can tap back into object mode and once we start to move or rotate the lattice object around, the cube starts to wiggle just like we want it to. And this is exactly how we're gonna create our animation. So let's open up the timeline and first of all let's make it a bit longer. So I'm gonna set the end frame to frame 350 since we want to make a seamless loop, I'm actually going to place the first keyframe on frame 0. So go to frame 0, with the lattice object selected, go to the object properties and add a keyframe for the X rotation and another one for the Z rotation. Then move the playhead to the last frame and now we're going to add keyframes for a 360 degree rotation on the Z axis and minus 360 on the set axis. Now we can play the timeline and the lattice object is actually rotating and deforming our cube. However we have an issue that the animation is speeding up in the beginning and slowing down in the end which doesn't look very good for our loop. So in order to fix this just select all the keyframes and press T to change the interpolation mode to linear. Now the animation has a constant speed and our loop works seamlessly. Now we don't really need to see our lattice object anymore, so we can just hide it in the outliner. Next I want to add one more modifier, which is going to be a wireframe modifier. By default the wireframe replaces the original mesh. In this case however we want to keep the cube so just uncheck replace original in the wireframe settings. And I'm also going to bring down the thickness of the wireframe. For the rendering I'm actually going to use the default camera that we already have in our scene. So press numpad 0 to get into the camera view. And first of all I want to adjust the aspect ratio. So go to the output properties and change the resolution to 1080 by 1080 so we get a square. Next let's bring the camera a bit closer to the cube, so press G followed by the middle mouse button so we can move it on the local set axis. We can also zoom in a bit more by going to the camera properties and increasing the focal length. Alright so next let's add in a plane for our background. So press shift A and bring in a new plane, rotate it so that it is facing the camera and then press G set set to move it on the local set axis. From the camera view we can place it, rotate it and scale it up so that it covers the whole frame. Okay so now it is time to get to the shading. 
So first let's switch to render preview. And currently I have my render engine set to cycles, but for this project, I want to use EV. So I switch it to EV and so far everything in the scene is just gray because we don't have any real lights in the scene yet. That's why I went to polyhaven.com and downloaded this environment texture. I put the link to it in the video description. Back in Blender, go to the World tab in order to import it. Next to the color, click on this yellow button and choose Environment Texture. Click on Open, select it and load it in. Now we finally have light in our scene and we can start with the shading. So let's open up a new window and switch it to the shader editor. First I want to add a material to our background plane. So select it and in the shader editor click on plus to create a new material. For the background I want to use a really dark blue color, bring the specularity to zero and the roughness to one. We are also going to use the same shader for the wireframe of our cube. But first let's add the other material. So select the cube, again click plus and this shader is going to be completely metallic. And for this cube, I thought it would be cool if we had a random color for each of the individual faces. There is an easy trick to do exactly that. For this, open up a new window, change it to the UV editor. Then with the cube selected, tap into edit mode. Make sure that you have everything selected. Press U and choose light map pack. This unwraps each individual face of our cube. Press A to select everything in the UV editor, change the pivot point to the individual origins and press S to scale them down. While scaling them down, press 0 on your keyboard in order to scale each face into a single point. This is all we have to do so we can close our UV editor again, go back into object mode and in order to see what we did, we need to bring in a new texture coordinate node. And when we take a look at this UV output, you can see that each face has a random coordinate. We can now use this in combination with a noise texture. And as you can see, each face now has a random value. However, I think it is a bit boring to have just those gray values. So let's give it a bit of color. So press Shift A again and on the converter bring in a color ramp node. Add this in after the noise texture and now we can add colors to this gradient. So I'm going to choose this blue color and change the black spot to purple. We can further play with those colors by bringing in a hue saturation node. And for example, you can change the hue to try out different color combinations. Or I'm just going to bring this back to 0 0.5. What I want to do is just slightly increase the saturation. So I think I'm just going to bring this to 1.05 so that it has just a very slight effect. Then maybe we can also bring down the roughness just a bit and increase the overall contrast of our image by going to the render properties and under color management play with this look. So I'm going to change this to high contrast so we have a bit more contrast in our scene. Okay, so next let's add the background material to our wireframe. And in order to achieve this, we need to go to the material properties with the cube selected and click on this plus to add a new material slot. Now to make the wireframe use this material slot, we need to go back to the modifiers and bring the material offset to one. So now the wireframe is using the second material slot. And if we want to use the background material, we just have to load it into this slot. And now we have this dark wireframe. We can also further adjust the size of the wires. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the shaders. However, I don't like the lighting so far. So first of all, I'm going to bring down the strength of the world texture to 0 0.5 or maybe even 0 0.4 and instead we're going to select this point lamp and bring it closer to the cube. So place it on this corner. Also bring it down with G set. And we don't actually want to use a spotlight. Instead, I'm going to change this to an area lamp. 
Then next let's increase the size to make it really big and make sure that it is rotated towards the cube. Next we need to increase the strength of it. So let's make this for example 1500, maybe even bigger and even stronger. Bring the strength to 2000 and let's also change the color of it. So make it either blue or purple, but I think the purple color is better for this light. Now we have those weird shadows on the sides of the cube, but we can quickly fix this by enabling soft shadows. Now I think this looks a lot better with the cube being bright on one side and the darkness on the other side. Before we get to the rendering, I also want to enable bloom so we get a bit of glow in the bright areas. However, I think this is a bit too strong by default. So let's open it up and bring the threshold to, let's say 1.3 to make the bloom a bit softer. Okay, so now we are ready to render. So let's go to the rendering tab and press F12 to render a single frame. If everything is working fine, we are ready to render the animation. For this, go to the output properties and change the file format to FFmpeg video in order to actually export a video file. Then under encoding, we can select the MP4 preset and bring the output quality up to perceptually lossless. Also, don't forget to set an output folder. So I'm just gonna bring this to my render folder and call it loop. Once everything is set up, go to render and choose render animation or use the shortcut control F12. Since we are rendering with EV, this shouldn't take very long. Are you thinking about upgrading your PC? Thanks to Rendero, this might actually not be necessary. Rendero is an innovative startup that provides high performance cloud computers for your creative projects. This is an easy way to access extremely powerful hardware without having to buy a new and expensive setup. The virtual machines can be accessed from anywhere with a stable internet connection. And with the code Blender Daily Set 15, you can get an extra $15 for your Rendero desktop. For more info, visit rendero.com. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and could learn something new. I am Nick from Blender Daily. See you in the next one.